After months of controversy over aspects of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, Mr. President Muhammadu Buhari signed the reworked bill into law, Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the number one, number one citizen, Femi Ade Shina, had promised on Tuesday that the document would be made law by today. Of course, vexatious direct primary model uh, of selecting candidates for political parties has given way to the indirect primary and consensus mode of primary uh, two. We admit that the signed amendment law is not a silver bullet for our man-made electoral misfortunes and that politicians will begin to clean the morally questionable political process. Or don't you think so, uh, J.D.? Yes, but uh, the electoral arbiter has to provide the building blocks for credible elections in our country. If you leave everything to politicians, then um, mess, mess you up. are sowing the seeds of confusion and uh, so much bedlam in our country. This, the electoral body that has the um, responsibility of providing those building blocks and ensure that we get to achieve credible, free elections in our country. This is what a lot of us are convinced that this electoral um, bill will achieve. Because for the first time, we are talking about electronic transmission of results. Nothing excites Nigerians so much about this bill as the possibility of electronic transmission of results, which means that you, Citizen Jones, if you voted in front of your house, you can also monitor the voting process far away from your house, even um, without being physically present in those places. And you can, from the monitoring, you can mm. even determine who indeed will carry the day. It's not, uh, it's not going to be a question of waiting for three days before we have an idea of who has won an election. Where we make it that transparent, as we saw in Ondo State, before INEC announced the winner, we already knew. On social media, on all the platforms, people were already convinced and sure of the winner of the election. It was the same thing that we saw in Edo State, because the people could follow the process. Because INEC had a server, through a portal, through which people can monitor the progress on election day, right up to announcement of results at the various coalition centers. Yeah. And with this electronic uh, um, oh, transmission okay. of results, you don't need to be going around with physical paper, um, in which uh, case, so, uh, on some occasions, they even get uh, attacked on the way. Uh, I make uh, staff, even sometimes they kidnap them on the way. Mm. So it means that the process will become a lot more transparent. That's what we want. We don't want a situation in which people will be rigging our elections. That's, uh, how many elections have we had in our country that we can truly say we are proud of? Oh, yeah. But we oh, must man. get there. Yes. Because smaller countries, frontline African states, that Nigeria committed its resources to make and them yeah. better. Today, today, today they are organizing better people. elections than us. Yeah. So it should prick our conscience that uh, how come we can't do credible elections? So this is one step to getting there. It has taken so long, but it gives me joy that this president, after five attempts, yeah. has finally given his assent. Whatever he has complained about, uh, uh, I'm sure that that will be addressed. The good thing is he has, he has signed. Those alterations will be made later, but we won't have to have a, um, um, a, a, a kind of sig a significant uh, event yes. you yeah. know, when that happens. That, you know? So, the, as he said, fine, let them remove that portion that the president thinks uh, bridges the rights of uh, of uh, people who are already true. serving in government now at yeah. this time. So, because according to him, it breaches the constitution. So, hey, hey, you see, because in Africa you get the impression that democracy is ab about elections and more elections, more so in Nigeria, and people become apathetic. You hear that because 
uh, they say if you vote, your vote will not count. And uh, that every and somebody had said, look, it is not about you voting. It's about counting the votes. Mm -hmm. So the electro elect electronic transmission of results is also in. But this signed act is not a silver bullet, as we always say. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, laws are made for men, not men for laws, like they say. Mm. So it takes the will of men and women to make laws, to implement laws, and to make them workable. Because laws are meant for the improvement of the society. That's, you know, I've been said. I like what has happened today, and I think it should be, it should serve as a guide to the executive in terms of handling uh, pieces of legislation coming from the National Assembly. And what am I talking about? If there are contentious issues in a bill, it should not delay, the, the, that fact should not delay the signing of such bills. Like the President has done today, I think this could have even been taken care of some months ago. This matter has dragged on for so long, for too long. Mm -hmm. Now he has come to the point that And those, said, some of those issues are yes, not really significant. Yes, he has said, okay, I'm signing it, but National Assembly take, charge, uh, take care of this. Mm -hmm. Which I believe this should guide, this should guide the executive going forward in, in terms of signing bills. Then the other aspect is that it's a challenge to us as Nigerians, particularly in the South. I must just say it clearly, it's in the South. These provisions, as, as lovely as they may be, as noble as they may be, up not, on election day, they take it as a serious business. And people turn out in their numbers. But in the South, yeah, you see people playing football. People sit at home watching mm. um, movies. And then tomorrow they say, oh, that uh, governor is A, B, C, <laughs> and all of that. Whereas yeah. you are not participating in the electoral process. So it's no yeah. longer an issue of waiting for the EU or waiting for uh, Britain or America to, to tell us send that uh, to send observer. Every Nigerian who is of voting age That's has now it. become an observer. Mm. You have now become a, an active participant in the electoral process. So it, it, you what, go, what, you, what you get your PVC. just said yes. the other day yes. uh, rings, you know, like a bell in my yes. ears. Uh, let the youth wake up. But you see, the youths are not registered. Did you right, wrong? <laughs> they, they I think, not, uh, not. I think, not, even not the youths alone. A lot of our people, people are, are extremely apolitical, yes. extremely mm. distrusting of the system. They will tell you, look, they, will, they are going to write figures. At the end of, yes, our politicians write figures. In yeah. many of the states, real voting does yeah. not take place. Yeah. Even where you see real voting uh, taking place, they still write the figures. Politicians procure from EC8A before <laughs> election day and fill in their own re the results especially and substitute. Local government election and substitute. Time. That is why uh, some of us are excited about this yes. um, electronic uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, because we yeah. can monitor it. Not that a politician will just have himself with talks as, as you are moving results from uh, point A to point B. They will go and hijack and then they force themselves on us. All this talk that you can only rig where you are popular, it's not with uh, Nigeria. Yeah. People rig even where they are not popular and they get away with it. Oh, oh, of course, that, that's the meaning of rigging. Okay then, we'll go on a commercial break, but we'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Okay, welcome back. You know, we, we are talking about the president signing the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. It is now law and binding on almost everybody. Uh, but let's quickly turn things over to Abuja, where uh, the head of management at IASA Africa, uh, Yaga Africa, I'm very sorry, Yaga Africa, the lady is known as Safia Bichi. Madam, good evening to you. Welcome. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so the bill has become law. It's uh, hooray, uh, uh, you know, for the country, right? 
Yes, and we're excited. So what we're going to all Nigerians. Yeah, what was the position uh, as far as Iaga is concerned? Uh, first of all, uh, we think that this act will make a turnaround in our electoral system if it's been implemented to the latter, especially for some strong, important provisions that are, are being included in this act. First of all, the act will help um, will help increase or help with the early release of election funds to INEC. You remember in 2019, one of the reasons why elections were postponed was the fact that there was delay in release of funds. Just about one month to the presidential elections, that was when funds were released to INEC, and it affected the logistics. So, uh, with section three, subsection three, with section three, subsection three of this uh, of this new act, uh, INEC by law is expected to receive its, its 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 funding for the elections one year to an election. So the challenges around logistics or the plan of logistics, it's in a particular way being sorted out. And perhaps if followed to the latter, we will say goodbye to the years of postponing elections, 24 hours to elections, 48 hours to elections, or on election day. Uh, the other thing is the fact that this same law uh, legalized electronic accreditation of voting, just like Babaji Day mentioned. Uh, before now, uh, in the, in, in, there, there, there are always contention on whether uh, the use of smart card reader is backed by law or not. We've seen court cases that have been overturned because uh, this is being rec it's not being recognized by law. But what, with what we have now, electronic voting, electronic accreditation, or even transmission is not abolished by the law. So we're happy that Section 47 of this new Electoral Act provides for that. Uh, again, uh, if you look at the issue of over overvoting, this, this act helped to redefine overvoting. I think, yeah, section 51 of the act helped redefine overvoting. Before now, um, what the electoral law says states is that if the number of of vote cards is more than the number of registered voters, that's the only time you can say there's overvoting. However, the INEC electoral guidance has always took a stand on saying that if number of registered the, uh, uh, vote cards is more than the number of accredited voters, then it's termed as over voting. Yeah. But we know that the law uh, supersedes the provisions or any policies in existence. And we have seen what has been happening. The politicians have used that loophole. And believe me, you agree with me that it's difficult to have 100% turnout. So what we've seen in the past and from our experience on the field is that once, for instance, you have 50% of vote cards, what politicians do is they just calculate uh, the remaining number of votes and add it up, and they go to court and challenge it based on the provisions of the electoral act. And of course, they have their way. So we're happy that this is being uh, is being sorted by the law. Again, if you remember what happened, the new <laughs> in, in, in innovations we had in the twenty from the twenty nineteen elections, where people were forcefully made to pronounce uh, election result, and INEC doesn't have the power to uh, overturn or to review election result declares under duress yeah. unless they go to court. The new provision, the new, the, the new act under section 65 has given INEC the power to review election result. So even if someone an, announced the election result over duress, uh, the INEC has the power to overturn such result. Well, uh, these are some of the great innovations or, or the great uh, improvement we think uh, are very, very important to our electoral system. We also, uh, uh, we've also seen the Electoral Act uh, expand the timetable, early conduct of primaries. Before now, it used to be, I think, about 90 days, 90 days, but now it's 360 days for INEC to announce uh, the election timetable. So it is expected that any moment from now, perhaps Monday, we wake up to see the official timetable for the 2022 elections. So, 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 so Safia, we expect the Electoral uh, sorry, the political class to play ball. We of course, uh, we're expected to play ball. Yeah. Okay, Poli go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I mean, so it is now left for the politicians to go by what the law says and play ball, allow the process to to take us home. In are, you, of are you confident that um, in spite of this uh, good piece of legislation, that uh, politicians who behave themselves? 
Do we have such a share? Uh, I cannot say. I cannot say that 100% they will behave themselves. Uh, and that was why I first of all mentioned that if we follow this to the latter, it's going to be a serious turnaround in, the, in our electoral democracy. But we are confident that at least our legal system has strengthened uh, and filled in some of the existing gaps. Of course, Nigerian politicians in their character will always want to explore uh, other means. But for now, we're confident that the 2023 has a strong legislation that has filled in the gaps we've noticed in the past elections, that's the 2015 elections as well as 2019 elections. Uh, we're going to wait and see. There's nothing impossible with Nigerian politicians. But uh, again, I think the, the, the space uh, for them to, to turn around with, with, with the process is, is, is shrinking day by day with us strengthening our electoral, uh, our, our electoral and legal systems. All right. Um, uh, we, we watch and wait for the coming days. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, uh, Safia Bichi. And I just spoke with uh, the head welcome. of management at Yaga Africa. That's in Abuja. Uh, Jide, uh, voter education is key here. Politicians have not helped matters one bit. So we, we are wondering whose business it is to educate the voter on his rights because he, the voter does not seem to know he has rights under the law. Uh, the, the politicians have a role to play here. INEC also has a role to play. INEC has a unit um, that takes care of voter education and all that. but. At the end of the day, just like a general told me when um, I went to my degree in December to do some investigative stories, the equipment is not the problem. It is the individual who mans the equipment. equipment. If the individual who mans the equipment lacks the will to fight, you are not going to win a war. If the politicians do not turn a new leaf, no matter what laws we come up with, we are going to um, discover that we are not making real progress. If INEC, if the crooked people at INEC refuse to apply the law, because we've seen them do that, and I've been talking about this repeatedly, even INEC staff themselves refuse to apply their own rules to the letter. Where INEF, for example, says no to the um, non-use of the card reader, that the card reader, whatever the situation, must be used. Even if it malfunctions on a given day, INEC rule stipulates that that election can be repeated the next day. INEC rule does not envisage a situation in which you will not use the card reader. Okay. But what do we have? Yes. Even though up to now it, it has not become law, but INEC, by their rules, they told their Rex and returning officer that the card reader must mandatorily be used. And those of them who are, um, who have conscience, those of them who believe in applying the law fully, they cancel election in places where the card reader had been bypassed. But what do we see? We see some INEC staff, INEC officials, deliberately refusing to allow the card reader to be, to used. be used. So we are INEC staff are aiding and abetting rigging. They should be ashamed of themselves. The other day, you saw what happened in uh, um, Akwaibom. We are an INEC um, official. Yeah. That lecturer, the, the pre professor, yes, yeah, was involved in rigging for a political mm -hmm. party. That's somebody that mm -hmm. so much trust was invested in. Mm -hmm. Now being the the conductor of the orchestra of rigging, it's a mm -hmm. very shameful thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very shameful thing. Mm -hmm. So we we we're talking about all this. The individuals, they have a lot to do to make this work. It, Emeka, you know, uh, Professor Shoinka said, in a country where professors uh, would frown at cases of, say, corruption, help 
politicians to rig elections. The same, you know, by the same token. And you're wondering. It's one of the things, you know, what? people have been also throwing at uh, us that um, you're talking about your benefits and things, talking about investors. But you are not talking, nobody has heard you say anything about the involvement of professors mm. in electoral malpractices. And we, that we must begin to ask questions from relevant bodies because INEC cannot work. Alone, INEC must work in concert with civil society organizations and with various groups. Then, of course, we have said Nigerians must be vigilant. Then, again, we must make sure that issues of electoral malpractices are raised through different means. Social media is there. You saw what happened in Anambra State, in yeah. Iyala, yeah. where an electoral officer disappeared with um, the sheets election for recording, materials. you know, yeah. election materials. What has happened to such a person? People need to be made to face the law. Such a person by now ought to have been convicted. People like that, if, they, is there, if people have made examples of, you will see that the trust of Nigerians in the electoral process will rise. And people will be, you don't even need to talk too much. Mm. In terms of voter education, and people will troop out. You, you've seen a lot of in past elections, you know, people who are well educated, the elite in the country, in past elections, they came out. They came out. We now need to increase the trust of the average Nigerian in the electoral process so that pe more and more people will come out. And of course, I like what happened on Monday when the civil society organizations, right. when the CSOs, you know, when the CSOs came out to say President Buhari signed this, and happily, within the same week, he has signed it. Yes. Yeah. We, we continue to So uh, Our to problem move had forward. never been a lack of laws and, and so on. No, no, no. no, no. But, but, Gide, quickly, can, can we uh, talk about um, the INEC con continuous registration? It's, the registration has been on, and I hear it's going to be on for some many more weeks. But Nigerians don't seem to be, uh, to be interested. Right. Also, it seems the uh, education, the voter education has to continue. It's part of voter education that we need to do. We need to get more and more people to register and um, be part of uh, making the choice as to who rules them. Because if you fail to get involved, then you have no reason to complain if a charlatan becomes your president. Mm. So we just need to continue that education. But, I, but INEC has already um, announced that he's been able to add some millions to the, to the list. To, to, yes, so we are making progress. OK. Mm. Uh, all right, then. Um, again, the debate about that must continue. But we want to thank Mr. President for living true to uh, the promise. So, a new uh, electoral law amended has been signed for us.